This is Coogan Cassius for IFL TV in association with Macklin's Jim Marbella. We're in Liverpool here for the final press conference for All or Nothing. With me, I've got Tony the Bomber Bellew. I carry power! Jesus Christ, Coogan, it's nice of you to grace us with your presence. Oh. I cannot believe you've shown up for this. It must be an important event for you to show up because James seems to be been doing a lot of footwork and traffic lately. And uh, I'm just amazed we finally got Coogan back to Liverpool. I think the last time you were here, I was actually in a, in a fight, so that's a long time ago, eight months. Well, I interviewed you after that, after you come back from your Hollywood stint. Yes, but you didn't come to the Lording out, pretending you're a film star when we really I know am, that you're I a boxer. I am not a film star, I am a professional boxer. That is what I do. That is what I am. Just because you do something once, it doesn't mean that's what you are. Change is good every now and again. Mix it up a bit. I'm Change back today. Change is as good as a break. Um, can we just have a look at this chair that... You're on. It's a beautiful chair. I mean, this photographer chair. guy stuck me in and asked me could he take some pictures of me in, and I was like, really? I'm only going to spoil your chair. And he insisted, so, you know, I got it done. I think we're going to move now. Do you, want, do you want this chair back? Do you want this chair back? Are you sure? What's happening, Cal? Sorry, Callum Smith, the star of the show, is here. But you were a star of the show. I am not the star of any show. Really? I am merely just a boxer. I thought when you fight in Liverpool, Liverpool stops. And no, means I'm not at that level yet. That's Carl Frotch level stuff, though. You know, 80,000 in Wembley and that. I haven't seen my mate for a while. Give me a call, you big dope. I miss you. Don't look like you're going to see him in the ring again. You never know. Listen, if, 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 if it generates enough money, you will. I guarantee you. And he, he's still got fight in him. He, he still enjoys fighting. I know Carl. Your old promoter reckons he's uh, going to call it a day. Well, well, he hasn't said he's got, gone. Everyone's he's been, got their opinions. And, but don't you think Eddie's the one to know, Eddie, really? Eddie knows him better than anyone. And, and the, the most important thing that Eddie knows, Eddie knows how much he's made. So, you know, we, we don't all actually know the exact amount he's made, as he does. So, uh, Eddie might be in a better position to say he's going to or he's gone or he's not going to. So, fair play. But, you know, I, I you see when I see him and I see him as eyes, he's still got fighting him. When I see him commentating at the boxing, he's still got that, you know... I'll do him, that look in his eyes, so fighters, fighters see things in other fighters. You know, really fucked it up for Frodge, didn't you? Chavez losing to Tom Farah. Uh, I don't think it really meant, listen. Because he probably would have fought Chavez if he he'd beaten him. Chavez, but he could go in against Tom Farah. It's not quite the same appeal though, is it? It's beat Chavez. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Well, you know, listen, fights can materialise and happen in the space of 24 hours. If someone goes in this weekend and beats someone of, re of note or of recognition, then you, you just never know what can happen or what's around the corner. What's the next big fight? You know, if Badu Jack beats George Groves, then is Badu Jack, could, could Badu Jack fight Carl Frotch? It's a fight that would appeal, I'm pretty sure, in Vegas. So, you know, you just never know them. And, you know, we don't Badu Jacks with the money team. and. The money team carry a lot of clout and a lot of money, so you, ju you just never, ever know. You never know. But I do hope George Groves beats him anyway, for, just to be on that note. Because I think George Groves and James DeGale in a unification fight is absolutely massive and could potentially fill 80,000 at Wembley again. Do you think you could ever fill? No. What about Goodison? I think there's a possibility I could do something good there. Do you reckon you can get 5,000 in Goodison? <laughs> I reckon I can get 500. <laughs> no, listen, I, no, I, I, in, a, in a big fight, I reckon I could definitely do 25,000 people, 30,000 people in Goodison Park. Purely because it's an event and it's never been done. And Scousers get behind Scousers. Listen, if Paul Smith was fighting, or David Price was fighting at Anfield, all my friends would be there, and all my fellow Blues would go and support them two lads. So, like I say, Liverpool, we support each other when it comes to fighting, when it comes to anything. If it's football, it's on. It's red v blue. Anything apart from football with a city that unites, which has been proven time and time and again. So, you know, uh, at the end of the day, I me and fellas a cop eyes and I'm a blue. Does it get more, more gel than that? Let me ask your opinion about something. Um, yes. Paul Smith, obviously, over the weekend. Yes. Um, obviously, the me weight issue yes um, okay so let's start on my first issue is okay he didn't make weight everybody knows that let's just start though at the very very start the fight's made at 172 Paul wants it to be made at 168 or 170 now I know he failed weight but that's the official the first thing was the weight was made higher to benefit Trey, Andre right the second issue is it's 
he's, he's, he's not made weight for whatever reason. People don't know behind the scenes what happened. Could have been injury, could have been anything. But let's put all that aside. That he, he still got in there with the most avoided 168 fighter and the top three pound for pound fighter in the world. Give the lad some credit. Andre Ward's name is like a swear word outside of America in the 168 division. It's like, he's like the bogeyman. He's like, no one wants to, anything to do with him, no one wants to know. Paul Smith just went to his backyard, literally his backyard in Oakland, and fought, fought him when no one else wants to know. And I'm talking literally no one. Edwin Rodriguez is a very good fighter who Ward beat last time out. Someone who else is pretty avoided, and he fought Andre Ward and suffered and, you know, paid for fighting because he just got beat up. Paul Smith is is a lad who, who's, who showed no fear, gone to Germany twice, gone to Oakland. He's doing things that not many British fighters do. And people can call him and knock him all he wants, but at the end of the day, he's the one getting in there and fighting. If you want to call him and knock him, show us that you can do something better. Show them that you can, you, you can mix at that level. Say what you want about Paul, but he's got in there and he's done it at that level. You know, and, and I, feel, I feel it's wrong for people from over here calling him and slating him. Uh, I know the issues behind the weight thing, and it's a genuine issue. You know, listen, the lad, I'm not going to say it on camera because it's not fair to him, but listen, boxers do certain things to make weight. Paul was ineligible to do certain things to make weight. So it's as simple as that. I'm not making excuses for him. Yeah, I do think it's, 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 it's not right that you don't make weight, but then I also think it's not right that the fight's made above the weight either for such a for such a meaningful fight. I mean, some it's not it's not like this fight that I'm having, a 10 round contest, and I'm fighting some guy who's had 22 wins, seven losses, and I'm coming back from eight months out the ring, and you know, I'm not regarded as the best in the division. This is just a, a fight that I'm having to get myself back in the ring, get myself back in the mix. So, someone like me making weight isn't that big a deal. I mean, if, as long as you make the weight, that's agreed. So when Ward fights, it's an event. It's cool when people say he's not good to watch or he's not this, but at the end of the day, when he fights, he's one of the best pound pound fights in the world. So, you know, it should be at the division that's agreed. And I didn't, I didn't like the way that he done it at first. And I'll be totally honest, I don't think it was actually Dre, sorry, Andre, who, who made the weight at that actual weight. I just think it was the people who look after him trying to benefit him as best. Because I've got to know Andre. He was on the movie set with me, agreed. Lovely lad so down to earth, a diligent and hard worker. I seen what he was weighing on them scales two weeks before that fight, and I'm pretty sure he was weighing 173, 174, so it's obvious he could have made 168 if he needed to. Uh, I think it was a, a very honourable gesture of what he'd done with Paul and the fine in regards to that. I think that's, that's the kind of person Andre is though. He's a real nice guy, real solid down to earth lad, and someone who was a credit to boxing. And, and, and on top of all that, an amazing and immaculate boxer as well at the same time. Probably, even with Mayweather, probably the hardest fighter, I'd say, but it's between him and Rigondo who are the hardest fighters in the world to beat. Purely based on style, they are the hardest men to beat. And I think Floyd Mayweather's the best because his offense is far better than theirs. But what I will say is, is they are actually harder to beat than Floyd Mayweather because Mayweather brings more offense than them and looks for, looks for opportunities maybe a bit more than them and fight with a lot looser defence than they do. But based on just looking at styles and performances, them two, Rigondo and Ward, are the hardest two fighters to beat in the world of boxing today. And Paul Smith went in there and tried to beat him. Okay. Hope yes. that's cleared that up enough. Yeah. Sorry it's gone a bit over. It took nine minutes for you to clear that up. Okay, but I'm happy I got it off my chest. I just don't like when people slate boxes. That's, Listen, if it's so easy, enough. get in there and have a fucking go yourself. Absolutely, I agree with that. Nothing is, nothing is easy, nothing is given. You know, in boxing is the hardest sport to earn in the world. You have no fucking idea what boxers get paid. You get paid buttons off of them, absolute fucking buttons. Some of them earn well, some of them don't. But don't say he's earning this or he's earning that when you have no idea what he's earning and what he's putting at risk to earn what he's earning either. So where's the fat geezer on the couch going, oh look, he hasn't made weight again. <laughs> oh look, he hasn't yeah, made weight. Do you know what, it's, it, Paul Smith, me, never fails weight, and and I know people have brought up all kinds of things, but he has, well, it's very rare Paul fails weight, me, so he's, it's not like he does it again and again and again. It's an issue, and there's a reason, good reason why he didn't make the weight as well, you know, so it is what it is. The lad's a good professional, and he's been a credit to British boxing. Let's talk about your fight on Friday night. Yes. Ivan Bakarin. 
Yes, big guy. I, I'll be honest with you, I know all about Ivan Bakarin. I thought you would because you're looking like a similar weight to him at the moment. <laughs> He looks, uh, he, he looks is this, big. Is this a warm-up fight? Is this no, a... there's no such thing as a warm-up fight because every fight could be my last. So I don't know if this is a warm-up fight. This is another You've been out the ring for a while now, haven't you? I've been out the ring for eight months when that bell rings on Friday night. Eight months, the longest of my whole career. And I've missed fighting. I've missed boxing so, so much. I love fighting still. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and tell lies and say, you know what, I'm in the best shape ever. This has been the best camp ever. It hasn't. Simply, it hasn't. But... I'm ready for Friday night, and I'll do what I can. I've prepared as best as I possibly can, and I'm looking to put on a performance against the guy who's fought as high as heavyweight. So this could be me, me heavyweight debut. You used know. to be heavyweight, didn't you? Back in your well, heavyweight's the same way as I am now in the amateurs. So heavyweight's 200 pounds in the amateurs. It is what it is. Do you anticipate your next fight after this touch board? Everything goes well for you Friday night to be a world title fight. Hopefully. If anyone can make it happen, Stead, he can. So, you know, he's, he's lived up to everything that he ever promised me from the day one. Everything he promised me from day one. I know people will say, Bell, you going on with this business again, it's shit, this, that. Listen, the day I met Eddie Ann was probably the best day for my professional career because it, it's everything he promised he'd give. Made me earn it. And be in some crazy places and some dark places too. And you know what, you'll probably go on, on record as saying I'm his biggest headache, really, because I'm forever arguing and moaning and bitching with him and to him. So, but at the end of the day, he's delivered everything he said in the matter and been a brilliant outfit to deal with. You get, I'm not saying it, I'm not an ass kisser because I couldn't give a fuck whether he likes me or who doesn't, but any young professional out there you want to deal with good, honest people, then I would go and see Bastard and Steady. They are good people, mates and honest people. And every, like I said, everything he said, he delivered. Maybe I haven't lived up to everything that I said I'd do, but you know, I've tried. I've gave it everything I've got. Uh, and you know, everyone seems to have done well out of this relationship. Hmm. Um, I think the press conference is going to start very soon. Yes. So, do you have any final things you'd like to say? Or is there anything you want to get off your final chest? Final things that I'd like to say. Do you want to have a rant yeah. about something? Tell no, me. not really. Coogan, you look well. You've lost weight really good. You look better in person than you do on picture. You look very drained and awful on some of the pictures I've seen lately. But in person, you look very, you look picture of health, so well done. Uh, what else? Steady's turned up in all black, so I'm guessing he's gained a bit of weight. He's trying to that affect the... He's drinking three litres of water a day. I'm not meant to say that, but... Three litres of water. Is that supposed to be a good... I drink five. Is that supposed to be a good... That's what he's been doing. Three litres of water a day? Ed. <coughs> three litres of water a day? Yeah. Nice bronzy. What? Bronzy on your... Ten. It's all real. It's all real. Say it wasn't. Go on. Is, his next, is his next fight after Baccarin going to be a world title fight? Yeah, it, I believe it will be the winner of Hernandez against Ramirez. Stay there. All right, sorry. Signed Carry on. Season. It will be. Yeah, I mean, it's not nothing signed, but you know, Hernandez is about to make a trip to Argentina to fight Ramirez for much less than we can pay him for coming to Liverpool. So, fingers crossed he gets the win. Fingers crossed. Better not go to points. Um, but yeah, fancy a time for the winner. Yes, I fancy that too. So, like I said, everything he said, he's delivered so far. Is his opponent on Friday any good or is he a bum? Well, I think it's very disrespectful to fighters. I Could think you? if you look at his record, if you if you got a I'm guy joking. Well, you not very funny, I'm joking. I'm I am a bum. I am a bum. So could you beat him? Definitely not. So he's been he's been the distance with. I mean, he's, he's boxed a lot of heavyweights. <laughs> oh. Actually, I just saw him. He's yeah, a big no. old lump. Oh yeah, I've just seen him. Know, too. Yeah, funny enough. Sorry about that. That's a big lump, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. The other bloke was a lot easier. Suda. There you, go. there you go. At least he's honest. That's who I thought he was fighting until I, I, I was yeah, but you know what? I didn't think I was fighting. I didn't sleep last night thinking I'm fighting a guy who's fought big heavyweights. Not just any, you know, but he's big. Tony's not saying, you know, all this stuff. You know, I don't, I don't make out that I'm a big puncher at all. Hey, carry power. <laughs> I just, just, I got carried away. I got caught in the moment. Now I've got to go to work at this presser. All right. By the way, back her in. I apologise for referring. I wasn't calling him a bum. I was just you better edit that off and take it off. Cause I'm not happy about this. It's unprofessional. You ready, boss? We put it in raw. Tony Belly, thank you very much.